Welcome back to the channel Upcyclers. We have an interesting conversation for today. First and foremost, we have a PSA return. This was a card that I bought in a BGS slab. It felt a little undergraded to me, so I cracked it, sent it over to PSA to see if we could uh, increase the value on it. Am I going to sell it or am I going to keep it for the PC? I haven't 100% decided yet, but I'm leaning towards keeping it. But I want to use it as an example for uh, discussion today. So as of right now, we've got the whole label covered. It's a raw card. So the question is, how much is it worth? Well, if you look at recent comps, you look at some aggregated sites like you know, Card Ladder, Sports Card Investor, all that kind of stuff that aggregates some data, we would say that this is probably worth around 900 to 1000 bucks. Okay? So, as we go back in time and journey through this card's existence, this is the label that was in the slab that I bought. This is a BGS9. What was interesting about it was the subgrades, the centering was what was holding it back from being a gem mint card with BGS. If that centering was a 9 or 9.5, actually I'm not sure 9, maybe just a 9.5 or better, this would have gotten a 9.5 and the gold label and all that good stuff. Um, it also, uh, on the back, I'll show you in a second, it had a 10 auto grade. I said, okay. Now, how much is this worth? Well, interestingly enough, a BGS9 actually seems to be worth a little bit less than the raw card. With it going for more like around maybe 750 to 900, you know, at some point over the past few months. Um, so a BGS9 is worth slightly less than a raw card, which is interesting if you think about it. But also, the possibility of a raw card being a gem mint card and increasing in value is worth more than just knowing that it's a 9. Because I think the expectation in ultra-modern cards, you know, stuff being made within the last 5 to 10 years, is that they should, especially chromium cards like this, should be you know, at least a nine when they first come out of the pack. The main issues being scratches and centering. You know, it's kind of hard to, you know, unless it's had a real hard life in the pack, it's kind of hard for a chrome card to have, you know, corner and edge damage. And even surface damage is unusual. It really often comes down to centering. So I crack the card and I send it in. And I was right, and it came back a PSA 10. And I had them grade the auto too, because like I said, this one already was. Oh, you know what? I missed I didn't keep the little extra square that goes with it. I forgot. I thought I thought it was on the back. Anyway. So in this form, I can't find a recent sale of a 1010. I think there was a just a regular 10 without the auto graded, I think went for about 15 or 1600 the other day. And the uh, auto grade certainly makes it worth a little bit more. But that brings us back to the most significant question. And I, I really want to know everybody else's opinions on this because this is something I think about and talk about a lot when it comes to sports cards is not how much is it worth, Right, because we can look at how much should it be worth, right? Like this raw and that graded raw graded raw graded. It's the same card. This in a nine. This and this. It's still exactly the same card. So I, I often wonder. Obviously, there is a premium being paid for PSA graded cards. But should there be? 
And the other question is, how much is a gem mint card worth? Maybe if you could distill this entire video down into one question that I would love your answer to below, how much should a gem mint card be worth? Is it the PSA 10 price? Is it the cheapest price that you can get from a, a reputable grading company? You know, somewhere that we generally collectively consider does at least a decent job, you know, which I think would be your SGC, your BGS, obviously your PSA, maybe even TAG these days. Again, sample size is still kind of small with them or any other grading company that you personally believe in because just because it's in PSA slab versus Beckett slab versus SGCA slab, it doesn't change the fact that it's a gem mint card. So for this card, if I just said this and I, I offered you this and I said, okay, I guarantee this is a gem mint card. You can't sell it. You have to keep it in your personal collection. You can send it to whatever grading company you want, or you can keep it like this in raw form. What is a fair price for that card? Is it the raw price? Is it the PSA 10 price? Is it the price of fill in your favorite grading company here price in their gem mint slab? Is it some average of those? I guess I, I, of, I often wonder, are BGS and SGC gem mint slabs undervalued or are PSA 10 slabs overvalued? What is the true number? Anyway, thank you very much for uh, watching this and indulging in my little uh, thought rant. But I would genuinely like to know people's opinions down below and have some discussion. This is something that um, I think is centrally, critically important to our hobby of how we define these things. And uh, yeah, it's something I probably spend too much time thinking about. But this provided a great opportunity to ha make this video. I'm, of course, happy that I correctly, at least in my opinion, I correctly identified what I thought was an undergraded card, and I sent it in, and I was right, and I increased the value on this card pretty significantly, which is awesome. So, as always, if you enjoy this kind of content, we have a new video out every Friday morning, so please like, subscribe, do all that ring the bell, do all that stuff. But most importantly, uh, it, more than any other video I've made, I genuinely would like to know each and every person's opinion that's uh, watching this video on what the correct value actually should be for a gem mint card. All right. Thanks again for your time. Have a great day.